All right, so welcome to another video. This week, we're going to take a look at the most common cliches that can be found in a stereotypical Hollywood-style comedic cue. We're going to learn a simple template that you can use as a starting point when writing your own unique comedic music. Templates like this one can be really useful for understanding what's commonly associated with this type of music so that you can make decisions about how your own music will either be similar to or different from the established mold. Really quick, I want to thank my wonderful patrons for their support of this channel and for making videos like this one possible. If you would like to show your support for this channel by becoming a patron, purchasing a copy of my book, or signing up for private lessons, the links are in the description of this video. So with that, Let's get started. First things first, let's take a listen to an example of this template. Here we have a short cue that I wrote using the guidelines that we'll be discussing in this video. Let's give it a listen. And there you go, a pretty simple, straightforward, cliche comedic cue. Let's take a look at how I wrote it. So first things first, we want to set the stage for our theme by looking at the tempo and time signature. You'll find that most comedic cues will stick to a simple meter like 3-4 time or 4-4 four, four time. They also tend to work with faster tempos, starting somewhere around the 100 beats per minute marker and stretching upwards to around 150 beats per minute. Our example was written in 4-4 time, with a tempo of 120 BPM. With the tempo and time signature taken care of, we can start to actually sketch out the idea. Now personally, I like to start with a harmony first approach, so that's what we'll be doing here. The harmony for comedic cues is a little more complicated than the other templates we've covered so far, but they still tend to follow a general pattern. As a general rule of thumb, Comedic cues will stick mostly to just two chords from any given major key. The major 1 chord, and the major 5 chord. The bass line will often alternate between the 1st and 5th scale degree of each chord to create a bit of rhythmic and harmonic motion. And this is exactly what we see in our example. The cello plays the root of each chord on strong beats, and the 5th of each chord on weak beats. <laughs> Now, this is where things get a little bit trickier. Comedic cues almost always modulate several times within a single phrase. Our example moves through a ridiculous six different tonal centers within the first eight measures. Now, the idea of modulating to new keys can often be intimidating to new composers. And it really deserves its own video or series of videos to do the topic justice. But for now, we can just discuss a relatively simple and common strategy that you can apply in your own comedic cues, which is called secondary dominant modulation. The idea behind secondary dominance is very simple. You figure out what key you want to modulate to and just simply insert the five chord from that key as your very last chord just before modulating. In most comedic cues, this strategy will actually follow a very simple pattern. You start out with your initial key, and play the 1 and 5 chords from that key as usual. Then, for the very last chord before you modulate, you borrow from the parallel Lydian mode, and play a major chord built on the second scale degree of your key. And this is exactly what I do for the first two modulations in our example. First, we start in the key of D major. The one chord from D major is, of course, D major, and the five chord is A major. So since this is a comedic idea, I start out with these two chords in measure one. Then in measure two, I repeat the one chord one last time before adding my secondary dominant. Now the second scale degree in the key of D major is an E. So that's the note I'll use to build a major chord, 
which would give us the E major triad. This E major triad will act as our new V chord. So, what major scale has an E as its fifth scale degree? The answer is A major. So, in the next measure, we'll switch to our new key, but stick to our trusty 1-5 pattern by playing the A major chord and the E major chord, before repeating the entire strategy a second time by ending measure 4 on a new major triad built on the second scale degree of A major, which would give us B major, which would propel us into a new key of F sharp major, etc, etc, etc. Now, hopefully that didn't get too confusing, because there is one last thing that we need to discuss about both harmony and rhythm before we can move on, and that is the rhythmic umpa structure so commonly found in comedic music. The idea here is pretty simple. Basically, the bass line should play notes on the strong beats of each measure. That's beats 1 and 3 in 4-4 four, four time, and beat 1 in 3-4 time. Then the chords should be played with a syncopated rhythm above the bass line. A syncopated rhythm is any rhythm that stresses notes played between strong beats. If you take a look at this section from our example, you'll see that the bass line is being played only on strong beats, either beat 1 or 3 of each measure, whereas each of these highlighted notes in the chords above are being played on either a weak beat, like beat 2, or an offbeat, as in the and of any of these beats, as in 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. This difference between the two layers is what creates the stereotypical umpa structure, very frequently associated with this type of music. Now, I think that's enough about harmony. We only have a few more things to cover for this template, so let's briefly touch on the melody before we tackle orchestration. So, the melody for any comedic cue is typically pretty simple. There aren't too many guidelines to worry about. As long as you have planned out your chord progression first, any melody you come up with should be fine. You are, of course, welcome to try writing your melody before your chord progression, but given how frequently this type of music tends to modulate, that can be a bit tricky. So I do strongly recommend starting with a harmony-first approach to this kind of music. Now, regarding orchestration, there are only a few things to keep in mind. The first is that you'll be bouncing around the orchestra almost as quickly as you are modulating. A general rule of thumb is that every time you modulate to a new key, you should consider adding a few new instruments to the mix, and even consider dropping a few as well. Finally, like the Magic and Fantasy template that we covered in the last video, there are a few different instruments and playing techniques that are commonly associated with this genre of music. Pizzicato strings, staccato woodwinds and brass, muted brass, and percussion sound effects like the woodblock, triangle, cowbell, and ratchet spinners. So with all of this information in mind, let's see how these strategies can be applied by listening to our example once more. While we listen, I'll include notes on the screen to point out how the template is being used. So, just to recap, a prototypical comedic cue will focus on faster tempos, somewhere between 100 and 150 beats per minute, and they'll also typically stick to simple meters, things like 3-4 time and 4-4 four, four time. The harmony will stick to major keys, mostly just the 1 and 5 chord, respectively. The music tends to modulate very frequently, every few measures or so, and one strategy you can use is to build a secondary dominant by using the major chord built on the second scale degree of your key. This will lead to a new key, where your original 5 chord is now your 1 chord. 
The Oompa rhythmic structure is one of the hallmarks of this template and can be built by using a bass line that sticks strictly to the strong beats of each measure, and rhythmic chords that help accent both weak beats and off beats. And finally, the orchestration will make heavy use out of pizzicato strings, staccato woodwinds and brass, muted brass, and percussion sound effects like woodblock, triangle, cowbell, ratchet spinners, and jawbone. While orchestrating your piece, you'll want to move around quickly, typically adding and possibly removing instruments with each modulation. And with that, we have reached the end of another video. Templates like this one can be super useful. They provide a starting point so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you need to write a comedic theme. However, they are cliche for a reason, and you should never fully rely on a template if you want to write interesting and emotionally rich music. If you are interested in learning an effective approach to writing unique and emotionally expressive music, I recommend checking out my video on the psychology of emotions and music, and or purchasing a copy of my book, The Musical Storyteller, translating story worlds, characters, and emotions into music. Once again, I want to thank my wonderful patrons for their support, as well as all of you who show your support through the many kind and supportive comments, emails, and messages that I receive. I appreciate each and every one of you. So until next time, keep studying, keep working hard, and keep writing new music.